Right, a bit, little bit about me. So I was a, a professional sportsman up until the age of 21. Uh, and then I fell out of professional sports. So I went into semi-professional sports. Uh, and then within a couple of years, I was out of that, partly because I was rubbish. And other than that, because uh, my body wasn't really up for it anymore. Uh, I was I was ready to pack it in probably a year before I actually did in the end. But there's me on the, in the middle row towards the right-hand side with a lovely skinhead there. <laughs> After football, I moved into, into property investment, and this was probably the, one of the worst properties that I bought. Number 44, Valley Road in Lye. You can check it out for yourself. Uh, and this was beautiful. I absolutely loved it. My, one of my favorite deals ever. Well, I moved into little properties like this, and then I moved into bigger things like this, uh, office blocks, um, things like that. And then I started teaching people how to do it. I had a, a demand from people to, uh, you know, teach them down in London in particular. That's where we had our most receptive audience. How to buy and sell property, invest in property, residential, commercial. So I started teaching people down there as well. And that leads you into other things, you know. So I was predominantly real estate slash property investing orientated. And then... Uh, are sort of broadening out how how can we grow our wealth outside of the mainstream system and this is uh i fell into precious metals so i started investing in, in gold and silver acquiring these and holding these in in safes um you know both locally at home and also in in other places as well and studying these things so it's a lead you to other things right so you sort of take one step and then another step opens itself up to you. And this is what was happening at the time. Obviously, cryptocurrency is a huge thing now. And this is what happened with me probably 2017. Uh, I fe fell into cryptocurrency. And that's another side of, of personal finance that sort of revealed itself. So there's Bitcoin and Ethereum there. And the, over the overall uh, personal finance uh, industry, if you like, sort of opened itself up to me. I started studying intently on, on all things personal finance. And this is how I've got here today with thinking wealth and how we're going to take this to the marketplace to create uh, an investment hub and a community so that people can create wealth for themselves. Uh, that isn't common knowledge um, because, to be honest, as we're going to go through, the system is stacked against the average person. If you haven't found that out already, uh, I'm going to prove it to you today. Uh, and that's what this is all about at Thinking Wealth. And this is what this webinar is all about. So let me tell you about the our promise today. Okay, We will prove that anybody can considerably increase their net worth over time using provable and time-tested formulas. All of this without the need for lots of knowledge and technical skill. And that's my promise to you uh, throughout this webinar. Okay, I'm just going to go and check on Zoom for one moment to make sure there's no other participants. Okay, yep, there's one more. Okay, so back on the screen. Just before we begin, this is not financial advice. Uh, this is for entertainment purposes. Uh, so I'm not advising you to do anything here. I think the FCA in, in, the, in Britain, and I know we've got a couple of people from the US and everything as well, uh, with all these regulatory bodies, I have to say up front, I'm not advising you to do anything here. I'm just sharing with you what works for me and what has worked for millions of others. Um, and in particular, the people I've worked with in the past. This is all about taking control of your financial sovereignty, uh, because sovereignty right now is a, is a big thing. If you haven't noticed over the last 12 or 18 months, there's a lot of con control structures in the world uh, that are, are intent on, on taking away liberties and freedom. Uh, this isn't to do with conspiracy and all that type of stuff. Uh, whether it's meant to happen or not, the reality is that uh, a lot of wealthy people have got richer and, uh, and the average person has got poorer, whether that's through intent, as I say, or not. It's just the radical truth. So uh, 
financial sovereignty, it's time for us to take control of that. Somebody has wanted to join again. I apologize for this. I'm just letting them in. Okay, so it's time to take control of your financial sovereignty. And now, as I've mentioned, this system is not set up for you. It's not set up for the average person, which is why financially most people stay average. It's set up for a very few people. Now, once again, it's not a conspiracy. It's not being set up by a small group of people in order to benefit from it, just those people. You have to know the tricks of the trade and the techniques and the formulas that create the winning solution, right? And that isn't known by many people. It's not taught in the schooling system across the Western world, uh, and I'm fairly confident in the Eastern world as well. Uh, is there a reason for that? I don't know. That's anybody's guess. But this is a, an image that uh, I find quite amusing, really, because uh, the big boys on Wall Street and in the city of London, they... Uh, when all this money is printed, as we're going to go through, uh, it sort of finds its way to the top, right? And these are the type of people who sit there making all the money off of this printed currency that the central banking system, uh, you know, is creating. And this is what I imagine these people to be like, okay? We've had another straggler. This is the last one. I'm not doing it anymore. Okay, so what has happened over these last 12, 18 months? And I'm going to talk a lot about the last 12, 18 months because it's vitally important we know what's going on. Quantitative easing, and now this is from the Bank of England website. Quantitative easing is a tool that central banks like us can use to inject money directly into the economy. Money is either physical, like banknotes, or digital, like the money in your bank account. Quantitative easing involves us creating digital money. We then use it to buy things like government debt in the form of bonds. You may also hear it called QE or asset purchase. These are the same thing. The aim of QE is simple. By creating this new money, we aim to boost spending and investment in the economy. Now, this is from the horse's mouth. A newspaper article from June 2020, the Bank of England is forecast to ramp up its money printing program to almost one trillion over the next year. The European Central Bank signals faster money printing to keep lid on yields, that's investment yields. Now, what is all this causing? The decline of purchasing power of given currency over time. This is from Investopedia.com. Reflected in the increase of an average price level of a basket of selected goods and services in an economy over a period of time. And the rise in the general level of prices, often expressed as a percentage, means that a unit of currency effectively buys less than it did in prior periods. Now, in a nutshell... What it's saying here is that inflation uh, lowers the value of your currency in relation to the thing that it's buying. So essentially, your wealth is being eroded away by inflation. It could be considered, although it's not a, a technically a tax, it could be considered a tax that you, you have no choice to pay because the people in power are creating that much currency. It's important to know that this isn't money, it's currency, it's different. The currency that has been pumped into the economy right now is eroding every single penny, every single pound in your bank account. And that's important to realize because if the inflation rate is higher than your savings rate, you're essentially losing wealth. Can I just ask anyone to mute themselves as well? I can hear some background noise. And this is an article that I found today. Well, three articles on BBC uh, News, I think it was. The Bank of England's Andy Haldane voices 4% inflation fear. The bank governor warns against overreaction to higher inflation. The uh, European Central Bank should not tolerate inflation overshoot. Now, this is 
uh, headlines. These are like breaking news stories, right? So they are expecting high inflation rates. Don't hide from this. This is both, if you know what you're doing, this is your friend. Um, as much as if you don't know what it's doing, it's your foe, okay? So I'm making you aware of it right now. Let's look at the chart here of the purchasing power of the US dollar over the last 100 years or so. The Federal Reserve was created, uh, I think it was uh, just after World War I, I believe. Uh, as you can see, it's gradually declined up until 2021, where it's worth about $1 is worth the equivalent of $100 100 years ago. Now you can see how you, a wealth of people would be eroded. That same $100 is worth a hundredth of what it was 100 years ago. That's primarily through the uh, printing of currency. About 20% of all US dollars were created this year, and I believe that was from March to March, 2020 to 2021. $18.72 trillion. Now, our mind uh, cannot comprehend how much money that is. I think if uh, you put it into seconds, it's something like 35,000 years for one trillion. So if you put 18 trillion, it's simply unpayable, complete, completely uh, out of the, the government's remits here to pay that back. It's impossible. Let's look at the old uh, adage here. We can always see using chocolate bars, the size of the chocolate bars are decreasing. You can see that there, 28.1%, 25%, 20%. You can read them for yourself. The size of the chocolate bars are going down, uh, but the prices in the shop will stay the same. So the sizes goes down, the price will stay the same or even go up. So that is one way inflation shows itself in the quantity of a product. This is going on. This is real life. This is reality. Let's not hide from it. Now, look at, let's look at the average savings accounts. So you've got 0 0.5 um, up to 1.25. This is from today, by the way. I found these uh, interest rates. They do change daily. The highest on there is 1.26%, and that you must lock cash away for that to get that. If you want to allow withdrawal, the highest is 1.25%. I've never even heard of CHIP. They're probably a, a challenger bank. Um, but if you, you know, if you can't earn more than 1.25% on your money, uh, there's something wrong. You need to educate yourself on how to invest properly, which is what this is all about. So if inflation, as we can see on this slide here, uh, on the left-hand side is 4%, there or thereabouts. And our savings rate is, let's just use a round figure of 1%. That means you're losing 3% of your money every single year. So if you had £10,000 in a, a bank account earning 1% and inflation hits 4%, which is very likely, probably higher in the future, you're losing 3% of that money just by leaving it there. Uh, I don't know about you, but uh, you're not going to uh, get wealthy doing that. You're not going to set, uh, set yourself up for a, a brighter future by uh, leaving your money lying around in a saving account. That is uh, financial suicide, to be honest. So my question to you, what choice do you have in the matter here? Do you want to take control of your financial futures uh, and you know your financial sovereignty, or do you want to be at the mercy of central banking systems uh, and other powers that be that can sort of manipulate the markets and uh, erode your wealth? Let's not pretend that there are people in positions of power that can manipulate things to the way their friends want them to be. Let's not mention politicians. Uh, absolutely astounding how corrupt everything is. Let's not pretend that that isn't happening at the highest levels of Wall Street in the city of London uh, and in the, the Eurozone as well. So what choice do you have? Let's talk a little bit here about psychology because I can't go too deep here. We haven't got enough time. But there's a few subtle shifts that we need to make in our mindsets. And the primary one is long-term thinking. We cannot think short-term. The wealthiest people uh, are generationally wealthy. They've been wealthy for hundreds of years, the families, and it will continue to do so. 
we have to think long term. If you're a young man, think in terms of grandchildren. If you're uh, if you're older than that, think into uh, think in terms of your grandchildren's grandchildren, right? So let's start thinking long term rather than short term. And let's give you an example of this. I mentioned this in the last webinar that I did. Would you take one million pound today or dollars today, or would you take one penny doubled every day for one month? So let's have a look at that. I know most people, uh, well, a few people have seen this before. But on the left-hand side, that's a penny doubled every day. You end up with, on day 35,368,709 pound or dollars. That's a penny doubled. So the question was, would you take a million today or a penny doubled every day for one month? So if you'd, uh, if you'd have took the long road or the, the more painful road, it, it seems, and waited the 30 days, you'd have ended up with over five times over 30 days what you would have done if you'd have took the million today. This is just a little example of the power of compounding. So let's show you a little, another example using the FTSE 100. Now the, the FTSE is a, a UK index, very easy to invest in. You can just open an account with a, a big brokerage. Um, Hargreave lands down there, good company to use. If you invest 250 pound per month in the FTSE 100 for 10 years, on month 120, you would end up with £50,000, just over. Now, you know, that's a nice sum of money. The average pension pot is 50 grand, right? So that's a nice sum of money. And you can do that in 10 years. Now, £250 a month, there's a few questions you might have, which we're going to cover, about how you do that. That's a, a nice amount over 10 years. Now, let's look at it over 20 years with a pair of compounding. You put the same amount in over 20 years, you get 151,826. Now that's another 101,000 pound over and above the initial 10 years. And that is a small example of the power of compounding. Anybody with the right financial education can invest 250 pound per month. So never forget the power of compounding and that goes for all areas of your life. Okay, that goes for relationships, wealth, uh, spirituality, every area of your life. If you continue adding on to it, it eventually hits the exponential curve. And uh, it's a very powerful thing. I think Einstein said that compounding was the eighth wonder of the world. And let's not argue with Albert Einstein. And the next uh, psychological shift that we need to go through as well is that we need to move into the idea of cash flow. Not just lump sums of money that come here, here and there. We need cash flow. Monthly income creates freedom. Now, that monthly income uh, ideally comes from investments that give you uh, dividends, they give you cash flow, such as real estate, dividends, such as stocks that pay you monthly or yearly, whether you work or you don't work. Now, this isn't, uh, I'm not going to glamorize this. There's very little that is actually passive, truly passive. Property investing um, requires management. Uh, many stocks don't pay high dividends. So uh, crypto uh, currency, which we cover in, in our Thinking Wealth platform, that can provide very high uh, cash flow and passive income, but that's probably not for this webinar. We'll talk about that in a different one. But we need to move from lump sums of cash on a whim to monthly or yearly cash flow, whether you work or not. That's a psychological shift we need to move to. So one of the problems that I hear when I deal with people is I don't have enough money or income to invest right now. And I, I understand that because back in 2012, when I stopped playing football, I didn't have any money and I was drowning in debt, okay? So I understand that. So there's two ways to do it um, quickly. So we have, number one, cut expenses. It sounds easy. Uh, it's easy in theory. It's a much more difficult in practice. And number two, increase income. Once again, it sounds radically easy and it's not that easy in practice. But let's think speed here, okay? Cut expenses much faster than increasing income. It's 
you can cut expenses. By the end of this webinar, you could have written three or four things down that you could cut immediately out of your life and save yourself a few hundred pounds a month. I know most people say they couldn't. As I am uh, based on my experience with working with, with clients, uh, it's very easy to see that 99% of people can do that. And that is instant. That's speedy, right? But let's not be lazy. Uh, I'm one for increasing income more than uh, cutting expenses, but you have to cut expenses for speed. You could do that within an hour. You could have a, a list of them. Increasing income isn't that simple, but you can't be lazy. It's fairly easy to create extra income. I'm not saying make thousands of pounds a month here. I'm just giving you some ideas that I've, I've written down earlier today off the top of my head. So sell useless items on eBay, start a small side business, something you're passionate about. Anybody can do that. You could create a little landing page and start selling your things through the internet. Uh, drive for Uber. The reason I wrote that is because I was considering doing that uh, a number of years ago just to get some extra cash to put into the stock market. So that's why I wrote that one. And you can sell your basic services on Fiverr. So if you've done a bit of marketing in the past for some different companies, you can sell that service on Fiverr and you can set your own terms. You can work when you want to work and take on whatever work you want to. So there are ways. There's four there that just come off the top of my head. Okay, there's loads of others. I'd uh, invite you to look at just doing your own personal finance pie. Now, I just got this one off Forbes. This isn't my own personal one. Obviously, for personal reasons, I don't share that. But create your own finance pie. So we have uh, on this one necessary expenses. That would be your mortgage, your rent, you know, your food, stuff to live, right? Your, your, your Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It will be the bottom couple of layers. What do you need to spend that money on? Now, this is where often you can cut down on expenses. The amount of garbage food that we eat, uh, once again, look at the compound effect. The amount of garbage food that we eat that we can just completely get rid of um, and, and buy decent food with, that will automatically, because you'll energetically, you'll, you'll, you'll feel better and everything, you, you, every area of your life will improve. So that's one of the things that can come out, for example. Um, your weekly allowance, that's sort of your, your freedom money, if you like, you know, dining out, shopping, the gym, that sort, sort of stuff. And your financial priorities. Now, this is where personal finance really takes off. Um, investment, investing, uh, moving into pensions, starting your own business, paying off debts, that sort of thing. Now, uh, obviously, there their percentages. It's quite common to have a 50, 30, 20. I don't do that personally. Um, I suggest to people, if they don't put money away, uh, you know, for, for investment purposes, to invest, to begin investing at least 10% of your income, everything that you earn, uh, put it either put, put it to, to the side to begin investing or put it straight into the FTSE, for example, something radically simple. It's more to get you into the habit of doing it um, you know, or rather than the actual percentage amount for the time being, just get into that habit, that psychology again of thinking long term. And it could just be, I don't know, a couple of hundred quid a month, hundred quid a month, anything. Just get into that habit. Uh, I always say to people, anything that you say from cutting expenses goes directly into your investment section of your investment pie. Uh, so if it's just 40 quid a month, just start putting that away. You could you could buy Bitcoin, for example, if you want to do the uh, follow us. We talk about uh, cryptocurrency quite a lot. We give good uh, tips and tricks to do with crypto. Uh, and 40 quid a month uh, into crypto can, can make you a lot of money over, over a short period of time. So just get into that habit. Now, me personally, 40% of everything I earn gets uh, compounded back into investments. Uh, whether the, the price of the investments goes up or down is sort of irrelevant to me because I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But I aim personally for 40% of my income goes directly into my investments. And uh, I'd suggest that that is a, a great amount for compounding over time within 10, 20 years. Uh, if you don't want to, you should never have to work again if you can do that. Uh, the average income in the UK is around 26, 27, 20,000 uh, pounds, depending on where you live. If you can put 40% of that away uh, after paying your mortgages and all your costs, within 10, 20 years, uh, you'll be in your, probably in the top 1% of people in the UK uh, and in the, I'd suggest in the Western world in general, Canada, the US, wherever you are. Okay. 
So that's problem one. Problem two, I don't have enough knowledge. Where do I start? And once again, I completely understand where you come from there. Uh, everybody starts at a baseline, right? But there's never, we've never had access to the amount of information that we've got today. Uh, I released a video, how to retire in 10, 10 years. I released that a couple of weeks ago, I think. Check that out on YouTube. There's thousands of them uh, for free now. You can, you can check out. So knowledge now is not a problem. It's simply an excuse. But a little tip, a little trick, uh, there's something called dollar cost averaging. And this is, uh, what you do basically is you, you acquire investments regardless of price. You just set a fixed amount and constantly put that into a, a specific investment. What this does is reduces the impact of volatility on the overall purchase. Uh, and the bottom bullet point there is important. It removes much of the detailed work of attempting to time the market. So if you look at Bitcoin now, for example, Bitcoin is everywhere. Cryptocurrency is everywhere. It's very volatile. And what dollar cost averaging does is removes that volatility, regardless if Bitcoin's back up to $60,000 or at $30,000. You are going to put that $100 or 100 pound a month into it regardless and it's set and forget over time, you sort of forget that you even put in that 100 quid in. You just get used to it after a few months, right? It's just another psychological thing that we tend to do. So dollar cost averaging is something anybody with any amount of money can do. It's more to get into the habit of investing and, uh, you know, managing your finances rather than being at the mercy of the world in general. You can start to take control, become a financially sovereign and also, that's where Thinking Wealth comes in. That's what we do. Uh, this is a, a little example from a, a, a client of ours. He uh, sent me this picture. He said, thank you, Project Sovereign. That's my Instagram account for the tip on this a few months back. That's a 768% return. That actually went up to £1.60, £1.70. This was, uh, I don't know when he sent me this. It wasn't long ago, but uh, it went up a lot higher than that. And this was the same guy. Uh, he said, mate, I can't thank you enough for this. So we do this. We give tips. This is the crypto market because it's so volatile. There's a lot of money to be made. There's also a lot of money to be lost. So let's make sure that we, uh, we use our noggin here and we dollar cost average in. We don't just go all willy-nilly. Uh, and just a, a word of warning before problem three. Be careful of financial advisors out there telling you what to do with your money. You've worked damn hard to make your money, whether that's hard using the mind or whether it's physically hard labor, it's your money. Do not simply give it over to someone who calls himself a financial advisor because most of them won't have as much money as you do. It's very easy to become a, a, a I think it's an FIA, I think they call it, a financial independent advisor. Very easy to do that. You don't need to be wealthy beyond everyone's means in order to do that. What I tend to do before I take any financial advice from a qualified advisor is to ask them if they have more money than I do. If they don't, I don't listen to them because why would you? Okay, it's not that they're lesser people, but in that specific area, obviously if someone's got more money than you, you must know a little bit more about something than they do as a rule of thumb, right? So just be careful of financial advisors. They're very good marketers a lot of the time. Problem three that I come across a lot is that people have got themselves into a world of debt. And I was in the same boat in 2012. I think I left uh, playing football with about £17,000 of credit card debt, just from being young and dumb. But there's two types of debt. Uh, well, there's actually lots of types of debt, but we're going to split that down into two here. There's good debt and there's bad debt. Good debt. You acquire cash flowing assets. Now, this could be real estate, as we've mentioned. It could be cryptocurrency. It could be stocks, bonds, gilts, all these things. I could reel them off. If we uh, can acquire uh, an asset that gives more income than it costs to service the debt, then that could be labeled as good debt. Now, obviously, there's a lot more to it. You got to check out the terms and conditions of the loan agreements or whatever else type of debt you're taking out. But as a rule of thumb, if let's call it a property here, if a property pays more money in rent from tenants 
than the uh, servicing of the debt, then that is good debt because it's putting money in your pocket. It's a cash flowing asset. Investments that give cash flow set you free. And I also want to make a note here because people uh, forget about this. Remember the inflation problem. If currency is becoming worth less and less, generally speaking, assets go up to balance that out. And that we're seeing that all around the world today, right? We're in an asset bubble, including the stock market. But if you take out £100,000 worth of debt, for example, let's call it uh, for a property purchase, a mortgage, right? And uh, the currency com continues to be pumped into an economy. Inflation continues to, to go up. Let's use the 4% figure that we had there, right? Uh, so we've got 100 grand worth of, of mortgage and inflation is 4%. That debt is now going to be worth less based on the initial 100 grand that you took out in the first place. It eroded by 4% because the currency has become weaker. That makes sense? So the asset would have probably gone up and the value of the debt will have gone down. So uh, good debt, uh, if you use it to buy cash flowing assets, also works in your favor in regards to inflation as well. So good debt is a friend of yours if you know how to do it. Um, once again, there's no advice here to go into good debt. Please educate yourself. Use our Thinking Wealth platform when we launch to learn how to do this properly and safely. But I'm here to tell you that good debt is your friend. Now, bad debt. Very simple. You buy dumb stuff using debt instruments, credit cards, personal loans, all that other good stuff. Cars, holidays, clothes, alcohol, blah, blah, blah. All the stuff that, you know, keeping up with the Joneses, which is just another uh, a way of fitting into the crowd. I do a lot on crowd psychology. Check out my YouTube channel for that. Um, but don't use debt to buy liabilities. Things that go uh, take money out of your pocket, don't use debt to buy them. Simple as that, okay? If you want a nice car, try and do it with savings if, if you want to do that. Uh, but I'd suggest to you that when you get into the habit of investing, you use your investment income or, you know, you might sell a property, you might use the proceeds from that in order to buy the cars and go on the holidays. You don't go into debt to make that happen. But don't panic. If you're in, if you're in bad debt, don't panic. Begin to use a percentage of your investment money to drive down that debt. It's probably going to be credit card debt at the moment uh, that a lot of people have gone into. Online sales, like e-commerce, has gone through the roof. So a lot of people have gone into credit card debt in order to buy stupid things off Amazon and things at the moment. But that investment income, that initial 10%, you could use 5% of that and, and look at it as an, as an investment to drive down that credit card debt. And uh, what you can do is once you've paid off, let's say someone's got three credit cards with a couple of grand on each one, what you can do is pay the minimum on, uh, on uh, pay the minimum of two of them, pay 100 quid a month on one of them, for example. As soon as that one is paid down, move the 100 quid that you were paying on the first credit card over to the second one, plus the minimum payment, so it might be 125, and then drive that one down, and then drive the next one down. You should be able to get out of that fairly quickly. Within three or four years, you should be completely bad debt free, but you can do that a lot quicker. And at Thinking Wealth, we show you how to do that. So uh, what myself and, and Alex French, who's also on this webinar here, what we have decided to do is put all this information together. And now I've, I haven't had long. I've been on this call for 45 minutes. Um, I can't get everything into this webinar right now, right? But what Thinking Wealth is doing is cramming all this plus 10 times more onto an investment hub. And we're going to be building a community where people can share their, their wins and also their, their pitfalls, what they've come up against, some uh, personal finance and investment wisdom. We're going to create this for you so that you can, uh, you know, set yourself up, set yourself free. Okay. What we do, we show you how to master your personal finances.
that includes all this type of stuff. Uh, we'll, we'll do, we've already done them. We've done loads of videos. Um, we're going to do even more as we move forward. It's an ever-growing thing, an evolving thing. Whatever you need, we will create for you. We cover property investment. Uh, historically, the ultimate wealth creation vehicle has been real estate. Uh, and I can't see that slowing down anytime soon. Cryptocurrency. Now, this is the hot topic. We cover a lot about cryptocurrency and how to earn a nice cash flow from it. We tested a lot of, uh, uh, quite a few different platforms. We've, we think we've found our favorite one so far. We're probably averaging 10% return on our money, and it's completely safe and insured by uh, an insurance company, Lloyd's Insurance Group down in London. So it's completely safe. Uh, and we're earning on average 10% on our money. And you can just leave it in pound coin. You don't even need to buy crypto. You can just leave it as the pound in there. And we cover precious metals. Uh, with the precious metals, this is more talking about the market and where we think it's going uh, and more technical data on that. Now, precious metal, there isn't that much to do. It's not as nowhere near as volatile as cryptocurrency. But with precious metals, it's a hedge against piss-poor monetary policy, such as central bank currency printing. Historically, throughout... Uh, you know, before the Roman times, since the agricultural age, 6,000, possibly 12,000 years ago, gold in particular has been the wealthy person's means of, of uh, wealth creation, right? They own all the gold. Money used to be literal gold, used to trade coins, right? And as, uh, you know, governments needed to print more money because the, the policies were awful. It's happened throughout time, you know, all history, and it will continue to happen. They used to melt the gold and put in copper. Uh, and this is, today's form is to just put it on a digital computer, right? The old form was to melt the gold down, put copper in with it, and then it wasn't pure gold anymore. That was the ancient form of what's happening today, currency debasement. So we're going to cover a lot of this information on the precious metals uh, investment hub section and there's going to be a mindset section uh, a sort of a psychology around money section because the primary thing that stops people mastering their financial well-being is what's going on between their ears we are conditioned to act in certain ways and uh, this uh, in particular financial reality it, it, you probably wouldn't be on this webinar if you were happy with where you're at you probably wouldn't be here. So the, uh, a large part of thinking wealth is to do with how can I master uh, myself in relationship to money and wealth. So if you go into thinkingwealth.co.uk slash freedom, uh, we're in pre-launch at the moment. Um, it can, we don't want any money off you. We don't want any details off you whatsoever. Just go onto there watch the video, and if you're interested in uh, going on the journey with us, the Thinking Wealth uh, Investment Hub journey, please just put your name in and your email address, and we'll contact you when we're ready to launch. We're not far away. We've got tons of content already ready to go. We just want it to be just right so that when we launch, everything's there for you to go out into the world uh, and, and you know, create wealth for yourself and create that financial sovereignty that everybody needs to be looking for right now. There's also going to be a community being built, as I've mentioned. There's a forum for daily contact and interaction. We'll be on there, um, you know, messaging you guys and making sure that everything's okay. We don't want this to be about us. We're not, you know, billionaires or anything like that. We're on this journey with you. We want as many people in uh, thinking wealth as possible in order to, you know, grow the, the wealth of the average person. I, we were speaking the other day and the word that we come up with was, let's start democratizing wealth. Let's create wealth for as many people as we possibly can. And we'll just use thinking wealth as the catalyst to make that happen. So that's thinkingwealth.co.uk slash freedom. And now we're going to go into a Q and a if, um, Anybody wants to ask any questions whatsoever about what I've just spoken about, please feel free to unmute yourself 
or, or write in the chat or something, and I'll do my best to uh, I'll do my best to answer the questions for you. Don't be shy. Also, you are being recorded as well. Mel, I think you're muted, mate. I can't hear you. Yeah. Hello. You. Great to see you, uh, the Alexes. Great. So um, this 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 sounds wonderful, Alex. And um, and many many years ago, I was an IFA or an independent financial yes. advisor. Mm. So I do know how the system works, and um, it is absolutely corrupt. Mm. Most of it. Um, and um, I love what I love what uh, I love what you're doing. I love what you guys are doing. So um, I'm really looking forward to getting involved and uh, seeing seeing what it's all about. So are you looking to um, you, you're looking to obviously create a community? Yes. As well as um, are you going to be are you going to be consulting for people or how how does it work in other words that, if that will be a section so look at there will be a consultancy section on the investment hub but um essentially no that isn't the main thing the main the hub is going to be full of content videos articles things like that that people can simply go on to everything i've just spoken about broke down in detail uh, there'll be updated savings accounts tips and tricks in the crypto community because I'm quite well known with certain groups of people who give me tips. And some of these things, as you, as I showed you with that example there, that was like 800% in about three weeks. Now that I don't share that with people who don't go through thinking wealth. I keep that now just to the people in the, in the close network, but anybody who comes onto that, that'll be shared on there. Um, but listen, that's few and far between as we know, EML, the, uh, the, the, the best interests of people are not cared for here. This is thinking wealth is the plan to make wealth creation uh, a normal thing in, at the forefront of people's minds yep. because it's going to be very important moving forward as the world economy shifts so quickly. Well, yes, because the, 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 the thing is that um, what's coming to the, what's coming to the fore is obviously the, the deck was rigged before. It's still it's still rigged, but I think going forward, um, you still had to know what to do, and you could do stuff. But it was always against the odds, if you know what I mean. Um, so it's it's rigged towards the people that are running the show. Um, in other words, the house the house usually wins. It so does. the central banks mm. the central banks always win because they control it. And now there are always going to be people a few percent a smaller percentage of people go into the casino and come out winning than, than not because the game's rigged. So, um, but it's, I would think it's the same with the investing thing, but the crypt, crypt, crypto is ve very, um, very interesting because from what I, from what I gather in, they, the people that are usually running the casino, all right, I've got less and less control of that. So I think that's that's a really uh, interesting thing. So I'll be getting involved because um, I've put my toe in the water. I've got various things, but it'd be mm. great to get involved with, you know, that was probably after um, the, the last talk about a few months ago. But I know yeah. that, um, yeah, I'm... I've been knowing you guys for ages, and obviously you, Alex, mm. before you retired from playing football, because that's where I met you. Yes. Uh, so um, playing for Warsaw. So, uh, yeah, I'm mm -hmm. looking, for, looking forward to uh, getting involved with your journey, lads. Great. Thank you, man. Thank you. Really good. <laughs> Any other questions, anyone? Otherwise, we'll wrap it up. Thinking wealth will be, um, I, I don't know of anything else out there that what we are creating, it, it exists. I don't know of anything. It might be there, but I don't know what it is. We are essentially going to be um, 
it's going to be very low cost in relation to what we're actually providing. And you can bring people in to thinking wealth and be rewarded financially for doing that as well. So that can become an income stream for yourselves. Um, so for everybody that you bring into thinking wealth, you will receive five pound every month. So if you get 10 people to come through the doors, you'll receive 50 quid a month uh, in revenue and in income that you can, uh, you know, that you can directly put back into your investment account if you want to. So we are expecting uh, a pre-launch offer we're going to be doing for 30 pound per month. That's it. And it's going to have everything in there. So for, if you can bring six people into the Thinking Wealth community, it will essentially be free. Uh, you'll have completely free access if you can bring six people through the Thinking Wealth doors. You know, if you bring five, you'll only have to pay a fiver. So if you work it out like that, we have agreed, we've agreed 30 quid um, a month for you guys for pre-launch offer. It will go up because the stuff that we're putting on there is is it's worth far more than that. Uh, you could for 360 quid a year, uh, we can show you ways to make that within well uh, as i showed you there that one example that guy put about 500 quid into that specific cryptocurrency and it did 768 percent. so he made about six grand off that in about a month so for 300 we can't keep giving away things for that cheap it has to be a reasonable figure to keep everybody you know motivated and everything as well uh, Anthony Jacku, uh, hi Alex, hope you're well brother. I don't know much about crypto, can beginners come in and learn it and ask questions if they're unsure? Yes, that's exactly what it's all for, yeah. Um, so we will, we've already created, I think we've created about 15 videos, something like that already on how to start in the crypto game, how to put your money, in, how to put your fiat currency into crypto and then how to uh, trade into different cr currencies how you can, if you want to put, let's say you've got 5,000 pounds, for example, if you want to put that five grand into cryptocurrency, you can, uh, we'll show you how to move that onto a specific account, how to then start earning at least 10% on that money if you just want to leave it there, which is obviously far out exceeding inflation. It's far exceeding the savings rates that you're going to get. But if you just want to do that, we're going to show you how to do that. If you want to buy Bitcoin, we'll show you how to do that. Ethereum, we'll show you how to do that. So the whole lot's going to be covered for you and you can get all that for 30 quid. So yes, and if you don't have any, uh, if you don't have any uh, idea whatsoever and you're still lost after going through the videos, you just ask in the community that we're building and we'll write it down in stages for you. You can use that as well. Al, is it also worth mentioning at this point, uh, which you touched on earlier, how volatile the crypto markets can be. Um, and you've said yourself previously that you're quite risk averse in that respect, mm -hmm. how you can sort of go about it a more sort of pragmatic way, a more sort of, um, safer way for want of a better word um by doing what you've done over recent times by putting your profit to one side once you've made it mm. and not just letting the markets take over and sort of you're carried away with that volatility you can actually have an element of control by putting it into sort of the us dollar coin etc mm -hmm. etc yeah something we touched on in the last webinar we did for anyone that was on here uh, it wasn't on here uh, was we spoke a lot about stable coins and how we can utilize uh, so a stable coin without going into too much detail is something that's uh, tied to the fiat currency so there's one called the USDC the US dollar coin there's one called USDT the tether coin and your profits let's say uh, you do a couple of hundred percent profit and you want to take a hundred percent of that profit out you can put that into a stable coin and it leaves it in the crypto markets, but it's then tied to the dollar. So if it takes a big crash, which is very commonplace in the crypto markets, you've locked in your profits and locked it into a stable coin. Once again, all this is covered in, in greater detail uh, through the videos and the, and the reports and everything that we're creating for Thinking Wealth. Thank you, Maria. I appreciate that. Speak to you. 
So yeah, uh, one of the things that human uh, psychology and the, the, the natural state of a human, when things are going well, everybody pours in. When everything's going poorly, everyone runs away because that's just crowd psychology. There's no logic to it. This is that what, what people do. But the reality is that if you look at the financial markets, when everybody's getting involved, it's best to sit back. When everyone's leaving, it's best to jump in. It's, it's counterintuitive. Uh, so what we do uh, with Thinking Wealth and in the community that we're building, we'll be sharing these things as and when things happen. We'll be saying, we think it's a good idea to come out now. We think it's a good idea to get back in now in the crypto markets. Once again, there's no financial advice going on. It's just what we're doing at the time. Is there anything else you think we need to add, Al? Um, I think, yeah, I mean, we've you've spoken today a lot about um, sort of financial markets, et cetera, and the way things have changed over the last sort of 12, 18 months and the, likely, the likelihood effect that's going to have in the years to come, inflation, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, Property-wise, we've both got a lot of experience in those circles as well. Mm -hmm. I know it's a little bit aside from the subject matter of today's presentation, but is there anything should should we touch on anything on the on the property side of uh, thinking well? Uh, yeah, I, yeah. Property, I think, is is probably my favourite asset class, just because I'm it's, I'm I'm very biased towards it, just because I've done more of it than anything else, probably. But some of the things will show. A lot of people think that you need a lot of capital to buy real estate, to acquire real estate. You simply don't need a lot of capital. And when prices drop, which is coming in the next couple of years, there's going to be a price correction at some point. Uh, the strategies that you can acquire property, you can you can literally do it with a pound coin, literally. And some of the things that we're going to cover might sound unbelievable. It might sound, you know, very grandeur and everything. I'm here to tell you that I, one of my first property deals I bought for a pound coin. I didn't, but it, you don't technically buy it. You gain control of it with a pound coin. All of this is on the investment hub for 30 quid a month. So you can just check that out. There's, there's no point in us keep, you know, trying to explain it on a webinar here. It's better for you to just risk 30 quid to learn this stuff and then you can leave just watch them if you and if you're not happy with it just leave because the stuff that we're putting out there will uh it will change your financial future if you take action on what we're showing you any market condition any if it's in a bull market meaning it's going up if it's in a bear market it means it's going down any investment class will show you how you can take advantage of that to benefit from uh any market condition whatsoever so you're better off just uh, just checking it out and uh, make your own mind up after that. But in terms of property, uh, it's never going anywhere. They don't build enough houses. So the prices long-term will just go up and up. And the more currency they print, the higher they're going to go. Simple as that. Yeah, and I think you, you did touch on the ambassador scheme that you mentioned earlier, Al. You yeah. did have a little bit of a cut-off in connection when you was going through that. Um, so just to reiterate to the people that were listening at the time that may have um, may have missed some of that, it's uh, an idea around obviously gaining more uh, income through bringing people and introducing new people into the community uh, who can also take advantage and obviously transform their own personal wealth. That's the idea behind that. Yeah. And, and it's important as well to realize, um, we spoke about this as well, that we can't take that many people in to begin with. So there's only going to be a limited amount of spaces to begin with to get in the front door and lock in the 30 quid. Because after that, the price is going to go probably to 50, 60 quid within a couple of months. Um, but we can only take, I think we, we probably agreed on 50 to begin with. But within 12 months, we're going to be looking at 1,000 people. Um, but initially at 30 quid, we're only going to go for 50 people. Uh, I think we're at 34 already, something like that. So we're not far off. So just to let you know that if you do want to uh, just go on to thinkingwealth.co.uk slash freedom, put your name and details in there. And that's the pre-launch page. Put your details in. Don't want any money off you. There's nothing like that. We just need your name and email so that we can email you when we're about to launch and you can lock in the 30 quid. That's it. We've had a question now. Um, 
If someone in the Thinking Wealth community has an investment opportunity, will they be able to share this with the community to possibly JV with others or with you both, given your experience? Yes, certainly. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. There is going to be a section on the website that we offer consultancy and joint venture opportunities. So if you have the right deals, whether that's property or crypto or something, and you want to message us, you can do that through that section of the website as well. So yes, is the answer, Vic. Yeah. 